This is Papa Fresca Journal, and this is Barna Selga Popkovich, and we're in the holiday season. What is the best place to shop to go to the Manhattan Art and Antique Center? So now we're here with Jo, and she has a beautiful gallery here, beautiful paintings, some old masterpieces, some contemporary art. So Jo, it's so great to be here with you. Oh, thank you very much. I love being here, and I love to have you here. Thank you. And, uh, talk about the wonderful place this is, uh, my part in it. I have this wonderful little spot here, and I'm here since about 1983. Oh my goodness, yeah, that's, that's a long, long time. How many years is that? Well, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> my math. Well, that's, it's well, actually a few decades. A long time. Two, over yeah. two decades, yeah. right? That's right. Actually, my husband was here, and then when he passed away, I, t I uh, came here and I stayed here. And it's a very nice way to make a living in a wonderful and make place. And all my friends here, it's really nice. I enjoy it. And I enjoy buying and selling. Uh, do you buy specifically a particular pieces of art that you uh, look for famous painters or the ones that are not as famous? Uh, I, I look and try to find at least some listings. So if a person is interested in a work of art, they can tell their uh, friends that the artist is listed and uh, not all famous all the time. Oh, okay. You have to really like what you what you buy and what you're living with. You really do. And unless you're buying a Van Gogh or a painting yes. like that, yes. then you buy for investment. But in a lower price, it's for your enjoyment. Because it, even if it gets a little more in value, it's never that great big amount of money. And you have to love it and enjoy it. That's true. It's now, true. what's the the most expensive piece you ever sold, and the most the most inexpensive? Okay, the most expensive. I broke it. I didn't buy it, but I sold it for someone to a dealer, and that was two hundred fifty thousand. Amazing. And what that, was that? What was that? It was a beautiful uh, river scene. Uh, with all trees and the beautiful river by an American artist called uh, Daniel McKnight. Amazing. And it was in a, a, a client's home on Sutton Place, uh -huh. and he asked me to sell it for him, and I did. And, and the most inexpensive? Sometimes for $50. $50. Seriously, true. <laughs> if I find, in fact, I just sold a wonderful little dog painting that I found in a second hand shop oh. for $10, and I sold it for 50 <laughs> <laughs> Now we yeah. all love dogs. Do yeah. you have any pets? I have cats. You yeah, have cats. I do. I love cats. <laughs> now, being a collector as you are, what is the difference between being a dealer now and before? Because well, you did it's start much harder now. You don't know what the market is now. The young people are not interested. What do they buy? What do they buy? They don't want to buy, really. They want to enjoy things, eating out, going on vacation, so you have to kind of uh, tease them. Uh -huh. So I try to buy modern art now. All right. Yeah, so I'm switching from the wonderful 19th century mm -hmm. art to modern art, slowly. And trying. It's a struggle today, I have to say. Struggle today. But, uh, yeah, it is. But we managed to hang in there and, and make a living. Very good and yeah. impressive, so many years. Oh yeah, long time. Yep. And uh, talking about your gallery, can you tell me what are you carrying, what artists you carry now? Well, right now I have a mixture of modern art. Mm -hmm. Can I show you? Of yeah. course. We're this forward. one, this is a wonderful Argentinian artist. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Roger Mantegani, and it was painted in 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is a fabulous American painting. It's like a cu cubism kind yeah, of Yeah, that's that right. Theories. And it's a woman artist. Her uh -huh. name is Hayes Friedman. That was painted in the 70s. And of course this beautiful movie here that's is gorgeous. Spanish. So I try, I try, if I buy what I like, mm -hmm. I know someone else will like it. Talking about art, do you feel like women artists sell not as good as men artists? Or do you think that it's an equal? No, absolutely equal. Absolutely, Absolutely equal. Yep, they, so uh, we came to that age now. That's right. That's, that's, <laughs> and I find that if someone buys a very expensive painting, yes. they don't even ask who the artist, who the artist is. They is. love it and they say, I'm going to buy that. Someone who buys a $50 painting wants to know the artist, where he came Words. from, his <laughs> listing. So it's easier to sell a very expensive painting than a, a less expensive uh, one. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, tell us how 
people could find you? Where could they purchase their amazing gifts for the season? Uh, uh, here at the Manhattan yes. Lognet. What's oh, the website? At the, we're at the Manhattan Lognet Chic Center. Yes. And uh, on Second Avenue, mm -hmm. between Fifty Fifth Street and Fifty Sixth Street. Do you have a website that uh, people we can do. go to we and have, shop? I believe it's info at the Mac M A A C. And, and for the holidays, what are your three wishes? What, what do you want to ask Santa Claus? I, that I one that I buy wonder that I'm healthy, so yes, I can that's stay very here important. every day. That I can buy wonderful paintings. Uh, find one. I like to find the paintings more than I like to sell them. I understand yeah, that that's feeling. True. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. Absolutely. Our yeah. oh, next guest is a fabulous man over here, and this is Bob Sailing with his fabulous Bob Sailing antiques. As you can see, there's a gorgeous jewelry here from amazing Van Cleef and Appel, Cartier, and other amazing jewelers. Bob. Could you please tell me more about what do you have here on display and uh, what what's this store is all about? Well, I've I've been in the business for 45 years and uh, I pick up wherever I can at auctions or from uh, the public when they want to come in and sell something. So it's not a manufacturing thing like I can call a manufacturer and say I need 20 of these or 30 of these. I find them where I can and if I buy them at the right price, I can sell them at the right price. Fabulous. What's the most priced antique over here? It's hard to say which of the best is because there are so many varieties and in everybody's taste is totally different. Mm -hmm. I like stones because I'm a gemologist and I'm very interested in stones. I mean, I've actually held the Hope Diamond in my hand, which was a lot of fun. Amazing. And, um, you know, this ring, which is a, a big pink stone, it's a beautiful stone. It's called a kunzite. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a four carat diamond, um, really nice stone. Uh, and that's the also Van Cleef, the four carat? No, that one's not signed. Um, but the Bouchon, the Van Cleef and Arpel, I've got a number. And very interesting piece, it's a Cartier piece. And uh, it was made in the 1930s. And it's just a a beautiful hand and they did a number of these and they're very sought after. And what year is that? 1930s. Oh beautiful, that's gorgeous. That's amazing. And that's such a delicate work too. That it is, is very is nice work. And then the pearls, these are, are beautiful gold pearls. They're natural color pearls and they're beautifully matched. Um, now is that true, I don't know about that legend, but they say if you don't wear pearls for a very long time they become dust. No, 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 they, they won't, but what will happen is if you wear them with a lot of perfume on, the perfume will make the luster decrease. Mm, so you've got to be careful with that, but because they are made from animals. Of course. As, as is amber. Yes. And there are a number of other stones that are coral, um, is also. And you have a beautiful amber piece right there, I, I see on the right. All the way to the right? The ring? Yes. That's actually a citrine. Oh, it's a citrine. Yeah, yeah that's not a And name. citrine is a money stone, so whoever wants to get a money stone and get <laughs> wealthy, they should get that piece. Yeah. It's beautiful. The Boucheron ring is a beautiful ring. It's invisibly set sapphires. You cannot see any of the metal between the stones and everything. So beautiful. Which is nice. And what are those antique pieces of the, of the heads of pins? These are stick pins mm -hmm. that were originally worn by men in their ascots before they mm -hmm. had ties. Interesting. And then in ties, and women are wearing them now as well. Mm -hmm. I just bought this one actually two weeks ago. It's a very elegant work. And this was made in the 1920s. And what, what do they go for? Um, this one's a $350 stick pin. It's not expensive. I actually collect them myself. It's really the only jewelry that I can wear. You do? Other than some rings. But I have some great movable stick pins. Mm -hmm. if, if you'd like, I can show you. Of course, quickly. yes. They are gorgeous. Now, if you don't like the blue and white like that. It's sapphire. Oh, beautiful. It's a beautiful. And they turn. They turn. I always say that they My didn't goodness. have TVs back when these were made, so they spent more time on detail. That is incredible. Yes. And these also turn. They're all movable. Yeah, They're this is Cartier. Mm -hmm. This one also turns. 
And that's emeralds. Emeralds, yeah. rubies, rubies, and diamonds. diamonds. Right. And these two also turn. This is Cartier. As well. And how? And they, you don't sell those, right? These are not for not sale. For the sale. ones in my case are for sale. How did you find those pieces? Um. Again, through the public or auctions. Mm -hmm. This particular one I bought in auction, and I told the other dealers bidding in the auction that I knew I wanted it for myself, and usually they will stay off it. I forgot to tell one person, and he he made me go up a little bit, <laughs> plenty higher, but it ended up costing me $6,000. Six for this piece. Right. Amazing. Right. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, that's incredible. And uh, I, what else do you want me to show, which is absolutely must-see piece? Well, the coral is, is very big. It's coral. It's natural coral. Mm -hmm. Be careful because it's bottom heavy. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to fall on you. This is a very interesting piece. It takes very specific taste to like a piece like this, but it's Tony Duquette, who is a very well-known uh, designer of unusual and natural. All the stones are natural, natural. in that. And then uh, you have beautiful jade pieces right here. Yeah, and, and actually I have a nice jade piece in here as well. This was made back in the late 20s. Beautiful piece. And a jade, ruby, and diamonds. Uh, what's on that piece? What does the figure mean? I'm sorry? And what does the figure mean on the piece that carved there? It, it's, they're older figures. You can usually tell when they're curved and they don't come to specific points, mm -hmm. but it's a, a goodwill dragon. Oh, and it's a brooch, right? Yes. It's a brooch. Very nice mm, Very interesting. And you also have a beautiful collection of photographs. Yes, I've been taking photographs. I've actually been thinking of putting a, a book together, mm -hmm. um, calling it something like uh, Everybody Sees Something Wonderful Every Day. And that's what it is. These are, are pictures of, of places that I've been to and gone. And this is actually in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the UN. I walked oh, by at work. In when the was that? Last winter? <laughs> uh, yes, that was last winter. <laughs> and the lions are in Botswana. Have you been there? Yeah, all, I've taken all of these pictures. Oh, yes. Sir. Yes, amazing, all of these pictures. Amazing. This is in Costa Rica. Beautiful. The sunset is in Costa Rica. And that picture is 42nd Street. Mm -hmm. Looking west on 42nd Street, the lizard is in Costa Rica. And you got them so close. Yes, yes. What is the difference having a shop here and uh, selling it, like, say, it on, the, on the field, like, right away on TV? It's, um, you know, I, I've done TV shows. Uh, actually, I did Home Shopping Network for four years. And um, this is different because they're all individual. And I'm much more comfortable sitting with somebody and explaining the history, the quality of the making, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fascinating. Mostly I'm a wholesaler, but I have, in the last couple of years, gotten into selling to the public as well. I used to be a supervisor at the GIA, the oh. Logical Institute of America, and taught the courses. So, so you know them I very well. <laughs> you know very well the jams then. I do. I know and fairly well. And how did you just start it out? Where? <laughs> I started at a uh, family function and I was sitting at a table with two people I didn't know. One was a colored stone dealer and one was a diamond dealer. And they were thinking of selling colored stones and diamonds through one person, mm -hmm. wholesale, on the road, loose, not mm -hmm. mounted goods. It had never been done before. This was 1972. Oh, that's right I got into the conversation. I was a psych major at college and working in the mental institute making no money. I came up for three interviews and got the job, and that's how I started in the business. Now, what do you think the most amount of stones come from? Like, which countries? Depends on what kind of stones. And Diamond even say. size size makes a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, South Africa is really quite big. Mm -hmm. India also. Mm -hmm. Even Canada is in the, Even Canada. Yes. But, um, for instance, in, in emeralds, mm -hmm. I mean, if you ask real, real very knowledgeable stone dealers mm -hmm. where the finest emeralds come from. If you're talking about small stones, Sandawana is the mines in Africa where really beautiful stones come from. Mm -hmm. 
Bigger stones are Colombian emeralds, really fine Colombian emeralds. The same thing with sapphires. I mean, sapphires, Burmese sapphires are expensive and large. Um, there are a, uh, a lot of different Thailand produces and Africa produces sapphires. Mm -hmm. um, it really depends. Uh, opals come from Australia. Interesting. Lightning Ridge is is going to close in two years, but that was one of the finest producers of uh, of um, opals. Okay. Right. And the best sapphires come from Kashmir. Interesting. But there are grades up and down in either yeah, one. There are lower ones and higher ones, but. but a certificate on a cashmere sapphire would make it worth five, six, seven, a thousand percent more than the same stone that came from Thailand. Interesting. All right, so let's move to your room where you have your beautiful photographs. Two giraffes are in Botswana. That's beautiful. Is that like a national park there, or? There, there are national. A lot of the the country is national parks. Mm -hmm. Costa Rica actually has the highest percentage of national park land of any country in the world. It's so rare it, these but days. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but the giraffes, and it was very funny. The driver usually doesn't let you get out of the, the jeep. Uh -huh. But he had been with us for a couple of days, and he knew we knew what we were doing, so I got out and I started to follow a giraffe, okay. and she kept walking away from me. No. So I just sat down on the ground, uh -huh. and she turned around and came back when oh. I sat down. And it was really quite amazing. <laughs> I've got pictures of that, but they're, they're not up there. Animals are fascinating creatures. They're fascinating. You really. never predict what they're going to do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and people, people compliment my photography, and I'm saying, I'm sorry, it's the nature that makes it beautiful. Not so much and your love for nature, <laughs> because the energy is coming through. Okay. And it's beautiful, the rose is mm -hmm. gorgeous. This again is in Costa Rica. Any of the flowers I've taken pictures of, I've actually grown as well. Oh, you've grown, so you have like a garden? I have, I have a house in Connecticut with about 14 acres, so we have a number of gardens, and we take care of them ourselves. That's wonderful. And, um, three wishes is just, I don't know, to, just to be healthy and happy and uh, for people to be reasonable with everybody. And yeah, just so to be reasonable. And if you think about that, then you'll be decent as well. That's true. Yeah. Well, happy holidays. And how can people find you? <laughs> the Manhattan Arts and Antiques Center. and um, Which floor? <laughs> the ground floor. <laughs> the ground floor. <laughs> <laughs> Walk in and ask anybody and they'll send you to where I am. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Have a beautiful season. You do the same. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we're here with Eva today at this beautiful, uh, beautiful silver antique shop. Okay, could you please tell us more about uh, what sure. silver stones are? I specialize on the best and the best, uh, whether it's American silver, European silver, ranging from the 17th century to the 20th century, including Michelotti, Tiffany, um, 17th century pieces, and everything has to be top of the top for me to have it in my shop, otherwise it won't be here. <laughs> and I'm known for that all over the world. Oh, and and I've been here already 40 years, so people that know me. So people know me. And yeah. you buy and you sell as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. We buy, we sell, we try to help even, if it's not for me, as you know, as I know a lot of people. So it they works. Can refer to I refer. I mean, absolutely. What's the most inexpensive piece here? If somebody wants to have like a little gift for someone, I really couldn't begin to tell you. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I have lot. I mean, I have some inexpensive, but mm. what's the most expensive then? Probably this box. Any historical value here? Uh, huge, uh, yeah, huge historical value. That was in the museum in Ohio. Very. Mm -hmm. It was on, it's a document box mm -hmm. by a very uh, famous banker, and it was um, sculptured by a very famous woman sculpture, mm -hmm. and the manufacturer is the Gorham Silversmiths. 
and this weighs over 25 pounds. Oh wow! How do you carry one piece like I that? I don't. I have a lot of help. <laughs> I couldn't do it. That's amazing. But maybe I can. I go to the gym, so I have muscles. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have here uh, pieces for silverware for the table serving. Absolutely. What kind of pieces are those? I mean, coffee sets, mm -hmm. centerpieces like this. Beautiful fruit. Um, yeah, this was made for a baron uh, in Germany. Mm -hmm. That's a very unusual. They mostly come in silver plate. Everything I have is sterling. I don't sterling. carry any silver plate whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But everything has to have a certain look, and most of all, it has to have the quality. If it's not quality, you're not going to find it in my shop. Amazing. Well, Eva, how do people find you? Where do they go? What's the website? Uh, www lemonchicks.com. However, most people know me all over the world because I've been in business for so long. Yes. <laughs> and it's also word of mouth. I'm very well known, very reputable, and they know my integrity is 100%, always 100% there, and I stand behind every single piece I sell. Amazing. Well, mm -hmm. it seems like you love what you do. I love what I do. I l uh, yeah. And I won't sell you unless I know it's right for you. For you, exactly. That's amazing. That's amazing to match it with a buyer. Match it with a buyer, absolutely. I want you to be happy. I want the return client, and I've had them for 40 years. Well, fabulous. Well, happy holidays. Same to you. And uh, I wish you all the best for the new year. Thank you so much. Same to you Thank all. You. <laughs> happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. So, we're here in this amazing shop right so good. Akira Ogawa. That's right. And I'm holding one of the most amazing swords in my hands. Yeah. And it's real. It's, it's real. A samurai sword. That's right. Akira, tell me about your shop. What is here? Uh, I opened this shop 13, no, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm from Japan, Tokyo. And, uh, I originally print the My specialty was Japanese print. Mm -hmm. And my sword come from my dad. He was a uh, collector of sword. Was it a samurai or he was just collecting? Uh, he was a really big collector of Japanese sword. Amazing. Now, okay. here, don't hold. For instance, <laughs> like this, like 500 years old. Japanese sword. This is 500 years old. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The beauty, huh? And it's sharp. It's sharp. Very so sharp. So, uh, we use, use this to kill people. Like <laughs> <laughs> right. it. Can you believe it? Yeah, but now, uh, in the world, there are a lot of uh, sword collectors uh -huh. selling those. Sell it. So, and oh, what are the differences between those four? Because you have four of those. Oh, uh, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Depend on the age. This is like a 500 years mm -hmm. old. This, this is like 300 years old. And this one is a junk, but even junk. What is junk? Junk means. Uh, yeah. This is a little bit smaller. Right? Uh -huh. So, smaller and quality is not good as last one. But this is also like 400 years old. So this is a real sword that real people sword. fought with. Yep. They really fought yeah, with yeah. this sword. Chop your head. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, you, the people use this. And they can do it in one cut? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, one cut. Just with that sword. <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> gone. It's gone. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, uh... And how much those swords are sold oh, now? No, this one is like $1,000. Uh -huh. But this good one is like 6000 6000 Yep. So how do you get it out of the country, I wonder? Because I know you cannot oh, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go? Just you need a permit from Japanese government. Uh-huh. And once you get a permit, you can ship it from Japan. Mm. Easy, very easily. But it costs you a lot. So the whole sword would cost you like 10000 to have, right? By the time you get it here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Interesting. And uh, do you know who those swords belong to no, in the no, past? No, 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 no. You don't know historical no, value. No, that's impossible. We had so many samurai back then. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's impossible to believe. 
Now, what's the whole demean of the samurai? Can you tell us? Samurai is uh, people who worked for shogun. Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, for, for like geishas? No, 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 no. For the shogun. Shog no, shogun. Oh, oh sh yeah. you don't oh, know that word. Um, yeah, shogun. yeah, we don't know. Shogun is a king of uh, samurai. Mm -hmm. For instance, in England. Where are you from? St. Petersburg, Russia. Russia. Yes. Uh, you had the Nikolai. Yes, Nicholas. He's a Nicholas top, right? Right. And that there, there's a lot of soldiers. Mm -hmm. We call them samurai. Oh, like uh, army. Army. Like yeah. army of that's the czar. Right, that's right. Yeah. And you had an emperor back then. Emperor, you had nothing to do with emperor. Emperor is like god. Mm -hmm. Samurai is uh, soldiers. Soldiers. Yeah. So. Population of Japan, let's say 100 million people lived in Japan back then. 500,000 people were samurais. That many. Oh, yeah. That's so a lot. Most of them samurais. <laughs> most, so most of them had the swords. Yeah, so it's impossible to who so it belong to. So basically, each family would carry one. Yeah, each samurai had three swords. And then tell us more about your print collection. It's really oh, yeah. beautiful. That's pieces, Japanese yeah. print. Mm -hmm. I was collecting since a little kid. Mm -hmm. So I'm a professional. And, and when did you start your shop? Uh, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. This store. I, did it in Tokyo. I had a store in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And I moved to, from, from Tokyo to here 20 years ago. <laughs> I used to be a trader. Oh, what did you trade? That's why I have here. Oh, trading. Trading. That's <laughs> my. Uh, That's your other job. This is my action. This is my specialty. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So business. When I don't do business here, oh. I trade. That's amazing. Currencies, stocks, futures, options. What, what do you think about the coin currency that is? Coin, coin yeah. What do you currency. think? Bitcoin. 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 It's, it's not, not good. <laughs> no, no, no it's, a, it's called speculation. Uh -huh. It's not investment. Yes. So if you don't mind to lose... So ten, it's basically losing. $10,000, you go for it. Yes. Got it. But tomorrow, gone. Yeah. Tomorrow, one million dollars, you never know. But it's called speculation. Speculation. So this is... Um, Mr. Sanford Suchow. Sanford Suchow, and we own the business Suchow and Siegel Antiques. And I guess we've been here for about 20 years, even though I don't count. And, and can you tell I, us how old are you? How old am I? 86. That is amazing. And um, this is um, a hobby for me. I was formerly a corporate executive and a uh, company called W.R. Grace and Company oh, yes. on 42nd Street in that sloping building overlooking Bryant Park. Interesting. And this is what I do as a hobby to keep myself Occupied. active, <laughs> to give myself a purpose and a destination. I see. All right. So now we own this antique center, my wife and I, because there's nobody left. My sister and brother-in-law were also partners, but they're gone. And um, Ada and I, my wife Ada and I own this together. So, we specialize in um, Chinese export. All the cases the here, oh. all these cases um, that you see before you uh, consist of 18th century Chinese export. There are a few earlier pieces and a few later pieces, but generally this is what all of these cases contain. Uh, the two front cases here, you bury that with your, your coat. <laughs> these are the smalls, uh, the objects, the objects of virtue right here, in this case, and this case as well. And we have uh, hangings, wall hangings, mainly Chinese as well. And those are beautiful pieces. Those are Western European art, though. This is all a European art. Yes. Everything in this beautiful. case is European. And 
uh, in this case European, and that includes England as well, continental and English. And so you ask me about a favorite. I have no favorites because each piece is hand-picked, and I buy very selectively and very few pieces. When I sell something, I buy to replace it, but otherwise I don't build up stock. So you, so you just, whatever we see, it's here? Whatever, whatever I own, what the business owns, mm -hmm. is in the shop. There's nothing hidden away. I don't have things at home that belong to the business, and I don't have things in, in, in closets or cupboards. <laughs> Everything is on display. Clutter free, clutter free, right? What is that? Clutter free, no clutter. No clutter, I don't believe in clutter. Not in the, not in the business and not in the mind either. True, that's a very good point. Okay, no, I, I have only good points. <laughs> now here's a, you know, you talk about these women as you know, talking about men these days. That's Judith with a head. That's very of good. Of her lover for a night that she caught off. <laughs> this is um, Judith and uh, what the heck, uh, I, you know, my, my mind is Yeah, she caught his head when he was sleeping. Exactly. After but a night together. First she do seduced him. She did. With wine and probably other things. She did. And then she cut off. He was, he was a Babylonian general. Uh, general oh if I remember correctly. So listen, here it, it was, is. It's it right a, here. What does it say? Okay, let's Judith see. and... Uh, uh, here, it's right there, too. Here, could you read that? Yeah, Judith... And Holofernes. Yes. Holofernes, that's the fellow. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. It doesn't pay to get too close to women. You know, I've been quiet for 60 years, but I, I don't... Think and what I, happened here? There was a crack in there. Uh, well, it's an age crack. Oh. Most of the piece is How old is the piece? Uh, about uh, 1600. Ooh. And it was formerly the... Um, it's a door. The door, you could see the keyhole right mm -hmm. here. Or the window. Uh, probably of a spice box or some other box. But this was the door of the box. Just, it's and a this door is a Dutch... And of that period. And how much this piece goes for? How much is it? I don't know. You see, everything in the shop is marked. I Every see. single piece That's is great. marked with the um, the price mm -hmm. and the description. Great. But ask me how much it is, I can't yes. tell you unless I look you at look? the tag. Right. But on the yes. other hand, everybody sees the same thing. That's so prices are not made up depending on who walks in the door. That's right. Whatever the market, so, it's right. not whatever the market for uh, there. This one is marked at $3,500, but I give a discount on... $3,500, that's reasonable for what century piece? Uh, 17th, 17th, century. 17th century. 17th century, so oh, I don't know how reasonable, you know. That's very it's, reasonable. Uh, it's what people like. It's a museum what, piece, basically. It's a museum piece. I don't know about that. But anyway, this is a continuous Chinese export here. You can see that, and two shelves of what's called grisai in gray, in gray, and this all uh, painted in gray and black. Mm -hmm. Popular about 1740 with the Jesuits who were in China at that time. Oh. Very popular. And actually, the the especially wardrobe. some body scenes. Yes. Very popular with yeah. the Jesuits. And here we have a mixture of um, English and Dutch, mm -hmm. and um, well, it's mainly English and Dutch that I could see, all English and Dutch. Uh, so this is a, a case that is unlike the other cases, which are all Chinese mm -hmm. export. This is English and Dutch. And finally, not finally, but nearly finally, uh, this case is all um, Dutch and German, Delft, earthenware, tin glazed earthenware, and some of these are in the Chinese style called chinoiserie. You know, one piece, two, three, uh, three, four, and five, all in the Chinese style, but they're made in Holland mm -hmm. or in Germany. Beautiful. Uh, this one is Italian of Adam and Eve, but the common denominator is that they're all earthenware, mm -hmm. tin glazed earthenware, unlike Chinese, which is all porcelain. Excuse me. Now here's another case of uh -huh. smalls, uh, the objects of virtue, object of Sleep virtue. Sleep boxes. 
boxes, yeah, early. Everything here is early. And who is that uh, medallion? This is, no, no, it's not a medallion. This is a, um, a portrait miniature mm -hmm. of a general under Napoleon mm -hmm. in his Italian campaign. So this would date to about 1810 or so, roughly. Mm -hmm. and, and well, you have some wonderful things here. I'll show you. Mm -hmm. oh, what is that? Uh, well, I'm going to show you. This is uh, what's called um, an etui or necessaire, and you have all of these things that a lady would would um, carry around in her purse. daily activities. Scissors. Purse, scissors, and and perfume oh, bottles, yeah. Can you get it out? Sure. Watch the cover. Can, can I sniff? What is that? Can I open it? I, uh, yeah, is sure, it you can open, open it. Well, it might be stuck, but it does it's open. Stuck. It's stuck. Interesting. No, I have two more up front. Let me see this one. Also with perfume bottles. That opens? Good. Yeah, there's no perfume. What is this, a nail file in here too? Uh, is this is an ear pick right here. A spoon, a scissors. That's very nice. Various things. That's uh, okay. So that's quite nice. Mm -hmm. You have some wonderful objects here, and they're all mm. early. They're mainly of the eighteenth century, eighteenth uh, century, but some uh, some of which are a little later as well. And th this looks like a Gainsborough painting. It's, uh, it's a mirror. And no, it's not a mirror. Oh, it's that? just a frame. It's in a, a Rococo frame, uh -huh. and it is about in period uh, 1800, maybe a little earlier. And that is a portrait miniature as well. Mm -hmm. So, what do you wish us for the new year? What do I wish yes. you? You personally? No, what do I, I wish you very for you. For you. Yeah, I wish for you. What I, well, I wish. You yeah, had such an amazing Help. life. Uh, Amazing life you're living. Health, you're living I, legend. I wish my wife and myself uh, health, health and to get through another year, um, one day at a time, one month at a time, yeah. and, and it's a long road, and uh, there's no way you can get off the road. It has detours and twists <laughs> and turns, and you keep on as long as you can. Life is a long journey.